what's going on everybody? Uh, headed to Bali, Indonesia today. I just landed in Vancouver. Uh, I've got a four hour layover here and then a 14 and a half hour flight, just over 14 and a half hours to Manila. Not looking forward to that because I don't sleep on airplanes. So I picked up a new uh, inflatable pillow, hoping that's the, the missing link to my sleep problems, but I somehow doubt it. Anyways, we'll see. Um, once I get to Manila, I have another 14 and a half hour layover before my uh, next flight to uh, Bali. And uh, I think in total the trip's about 40 hours, give or take, I'd have to double check, but uh, not looking forward to it. Not the portion of traveling that I enjoy, uh, but once I get there, all is gonna be good. Uh, and my wife will be meeting me there. She was in another country visiting family. Um, so she's gonna get there just uh, maybe an hour before I am and uh, we'll head to the hotel. Uh, yeah, airport here is dead. It's, uh, like I said, 7 p.m., so um, it's, uh, I guess, a red-eye flight. It doesn't leave until 20 past 10 or something like that, so uh, that's about it. I'm going to go find something to eat and uh, waste some time for a little bit. My initial impressions of the Philippine Airlines aircraft was that it was quite a bit outdated, not very well maintained, and just an overall not so fresh feeling. Upon boarding, you're provided with a pillow, earphones, a blanket, and a small goodie bag. Inside the bag, they provided a sleeping mask, a pair of socks, and a travel-sized toothbrush and toothpaste kit. The entertainment system is pretty standard with a selection of languages, movies, TV shows, a navigation screen where you can view in-flight information, and even a chat room where you can message other people on the plane. Upon opening the tray table, it was uncleaned and despite an attendant clearly noticing it when serving, there was no attempt to clean it. You're given a menu of food options for the flight and at first it appears promising. Notice however that there are no vegetarian options for those of you that don't eat meat. I know that airplane food is never ideal, but these meals were worse than they looked. I couldn't even stomach the pasta, but managed to get a few veggies and some of the quinoa salad downrange. I try to avoid processed foods and chemicals, so the pudding and bread were also left uneaten. I opted for soda water because I noticed that the water bottles being served had been opened and refilled, one of which even had a different clarity than the others. Breakfast was no better. The potatoes I suffered through, but the wet scrambled eggs from a bag and the questionable sausage were not going to happen. I can't speak for all the bathrooms, but the one that I used matched the conditions of the rest of the plane. Pooled urine on the floor, broken panels, no toilet paper, and just a general unsanitary feeling. All right, guys, as soon as you land in the Manila airport, uh, you have two options. One is you leave the airport, or the other is that you go through uh, like a little security check line. It's actually quite a long line. Um, if you're doing a, another international transfer. So that's where I went and I'm now upstairs right after you go through security it takes you upstairs and there's just a, a variety of different like little fast food places, coffee shops, stuff like that. So um, my flight isn't for another 14 and a half hours so I don't even know what gate to go to yet. Uh, because it's too early, so I'm just gonna get a bite to eat, hang out, and uh, hurry up and wait. So I'll keep you guys posted. The airport is getting very busy now. I was just, uh, I found a place to 
lay down in one of the hallways and try and sleep. And after about an hour, people came by and said that we're not allowed to sleep there. There's a lot of people trying to sleep on the ground. Um, supposedly there was a, a place where you could rent rooms for a day, but that's not functioning anymore. So then I was shown a place on the, the top floor. I was told I could stay up there if I wanted. It was behind some like a, a man gate type thing. Uh, they said I wasn't supposed to be going up there, but the lady took me up there and there were some people sleeping up there and it was just like this strange little room, smelled like mold and uh, not very nice, not very comfortable. Uh, in general, this airport is not clean. Probably they don't want people sleeping on the ground because there's, uh, it's getting so busy now, so I can understand. Probably, I should have probably left and got a hotel, but it is what it is, so, uh, anyways, gonna go and poke around a bit and have a seat somewhere and continue waiting, I suppose. Another thing to be mindful of in the Manila airport is if you have a long uh, layover and you want to use their free Wi-Fi, once you hook up to it, it gives you a three hour time limit for the day and then you're cut off, so. FYI. The Manila airport has four terminals and they're all in different buildings, which from my understanding makes transfers between quite frustrating. However, there are shuttles at various intervals. Most international flights are run out of Terminal 1, but I read that some may go from Terminal 3, which is a newer terminal. My experience is solely with Terminal 1. Terminal 1 is shaped kind of like a uterus. It has a central area with a duty-free, fast food, and some small shops with some unique and questionable food options. There are two wings, east and west. Both wings have a couple of gates and different airport lounges that you can pay to enter, but they didn't really look any better than the rest of the airport. The circular areas on the ends of the wings have multiple gates, electronic charging stations, a couple of cafes, and a small gift shop. The overall condition of the airport is terrible. Everything seemed to be damaged and falling apart. The chairs were ripped, torn, scratched, stained, and littered with filth and left unclean for what appears to be since they were first installed. The floors were the same, stained, falling apart, and in need of replacement. The walls and even the ceilings were damaged and in disrepair. Overall, it was the worst and most disgusting airport that I've been to. It gave me bad feelings about the country, which is a shame because I know that there are some beautiful locations there. But even so, I'm not sure I want to go back. My layover finally finished and I was happy to be leaving. The wheels were up and the city lights were lighting up Manila from the plane's window. Only four hours or so to the final destination, Bali. The aircraft and the quality of food was similar to the last one, but being a short flight and knowing that it was the final stretch of the trip, it didn't even matter. The Bali airport was a night and day difference from Manila. I didn't know what to expect and I was a bit shocked from the experience in the Philippines, so it was a pleasant surprise to arrive in a maintained and cared for environment. International arrivals head in and follow the signs downstairs towards immigration. The airport greets you with some nice Balinese art pieces as you walk towards the arrival area. You'll automatically come to an area with desks, which are where you need to buy your visa on arrival if you don't already have one. Make sure to check online before traveling to ensure that your country of citizenship meets the requirements for entry and which type of visa you need. I believe most countries are able to get a visa on arrival, but not all of them.
The visa is good for 30 days maximum and costs 500,000 Indonesian rupiah. I paid with a credit card, not noticing that there was an additional fee, although it was minimal, so not a big deal. They also have a currency conversion chart on the desks. So if you want to pay with your own country's currency, you can see what the cost is. The process was quick and easy, about a minute, and they gave you two visa receipts with a stamp date of entry. One for you and one for the customs officer, which is who you visit next. I was pushing my luck with the camera out as I approached customs and was told to put it away. Once you get through uh, customs and you pick up your bag, you have to self, you have to do a customs declaration. So they have these computers here and you can just quickly fill out uh, your information. It prints off a little receipt with a barcode and uh, then you can head out through the doors. So that's where we're going right now. Once you pass through the final desk and hand off your customs declaration, you have officially entered Bali. The airport isn't huge and it's very easy to navigate. On your way out, you're funneled through an area with a variety of shops. If your trip is as long as ours, then you're probably going to want to get out of there as fast as possible and get to your hotel. Eventually, you make your way to the exit area and you'll see a massive gathering of hotel transfer drivers holding signs with customers' names. If you need a taxi, you'll find them by the road just after that. I'm going to be ending this video here to keep the flight portion of the trip separate from the actual Bali footage, but check out my Bali playlist to see the rest of the trip in upcoming videos. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.